Alrighty, so I'm just making this video really quick to explain the differences between Cletus and Ketus. Uh, Ketus obviously gets you all the way to the key, and the normal Cletus launch only gets you to the charm. Um, so this first clip is the regular launch that you normally see people do. Uh, this is the most consistent setup. It's also free. Uh, just uses up and right on the D-pad to guarantee the angle, and then you land over here pretty much every time. Uh, there's a few different outcomes you can get. This is a slightly different outcome using the exact same setup but it always guarantees you're going to make it to these first set of crushers over here and you can grab the charm from here. So there's no real difference when it comes to the setup for Cletus and Ketus. They're both exactly the same setup. So I'm going to explain that now and then I'll explain the difference between Cletus and Ketus. So you'll notice here what I do is I'm jumping over to this crack on the ground right here this is your starting position you want to be right here on this crack and this is how I line it up so I jump over and I make sure Sly is facing in this direction uh, this corner of the building is a good visual cue just make sure Sly is facing in this general direction when you stand here so your cameras lined up right and I like to look at Sly's shadow I like to put Sly's shadow right in the center of the uh, this like where these lines meet so you'll see I'm gonna jump a few times just to line it up and when Sly is lined up what I use to line my camera up is I uh, the first thing I look at is this bush right here is Sly facing this bush directly if he is you're probably pretty close another way to uh, to tell is look on this right edge of the screen uh, there's a rock right here and um, this rock is a good visual cue for your right edge of your screen you can also use this mountain in the background uh, just line this camera up on the right side of your screen just about like this it's not super precise but your camera angle will matter it affects your launch so anywhere around this area works you're gonna have to try it out for yourself and find a camera that works for you but this works for me so you can try this out and then from here it's the same setup so this is the Cletus setup this will not get you to the key but this is the same setup that you're gonna use for the Cletus launch so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hold up on the D-pad and double jump and uh, land right about here. And I'm going to wait. So as soon as the dog aggros, I'm going to hold up and double jump. And then wait. And the dog is going to slam back, which he does. As soon as the dog slams back, you can see I'm holding up right on the D-pad. And that's all I'm holding. If you just hold up right on the D-pad and then let go, when you get launched, you should always make it over to this crusher, guaranteed every single time. I'll show that again one more time. And like I said, the most important part here is your starting position and your camera angle on the right side of your screen. I, uh, you can also use this bush, just jump towards the bush. Uh, this is less consistent because it doesn't set a, a guaranteed camera angle. But uh, landing here in front of this bush and then running to the right with upright will guarantee a Cletus launch. If you're going straight up in the air or you're not getting air control, your camera angle is off. You need to change your camera angle. So now I'm going to explain the difference between this and Ketus. All right, so the Ketus launch is exactly the same as the Cletus launch. This launch is using the exact same setup. As you can see, I'm in the same spot. Uh, camera is in the same position. This is exactly the same as the Cletus setup that I had earlier. Same camera angle, same starting position. Everything is the same, same movement, upright on the D-pad. And the only difference here is you'll notice if you look at my controller cam, as soon as the dog turns to face Sly, which is what proxies you, I'm going to go from upright on the D-pad to up on the D-pad. And this is what guarantees that height. So you'll see the height I get here. And this was perfect timing. So the timing of the up input is one to two frames. You have to hit it within one to two frames. If you don't, you're not going to hit the right angle. You're probably going to bonk on one of the walls. So this is an example of what would happen if you did it too early. As you can see, I didn't get I didn't get quite as much height here, and I bonked on the left side. So that's two frames early. I uh, I went back in editing and I calculated the exact timing for that, and it seems like that was early. Um, and if you do get this launch to the roof, if you land up here on this roof, we call this Rufus. If you get this launch and you don't make it over the invisible barrier to the key. There is a way to save it. It's not consistent. It's very, very bad. This trick sucks, but it, it, you have a chance to save it. I'm not really going to explain this too much. You're going to have to learn this for yourself, but basically the idea here is you want to jump in this little crevice that slides in and just use up on the D-pad here. Just keep tapping up on the D-pad and moving your camera slightly to the left, 
and eventually with a little bit of luck you will clip through and sometimes you'll actually get launched into the sky here you'll see i'm pressing up on the d-pad slowly turning my camera to the left and then all of a sudden slide gets launched and you can do this in runs this technically would still work you'd probably lose time but i mean it's not a reset here's an example of what it looks like if you do it too late um, if you do it really late, you're just going to get sent right into the water. But this was late and I only made it up to the top there. And this launch is perfect timing. I did everything perfectly, but I just didn't get enough height. And this is another thing that can happen just randomly. As you can see, perfect launch, perfect angle. And I just barely missed that. I needed like an extra couple feet of height there to make it over. And um, there's really nothing you can do about that one. Every now and again, you'll just get it and you'll get jabated. You just won't be able to make it over the invisible wall at the end. But like I said, this is another early one. I almost make it over. I get the Rufus launch. And this is another example of where you could try that, uh, that clip through the wall. If you do make it over here, the safest way is probably just to turn around and run back and then jump down into the train and continue on. You're going to lose a bunch of time doing that, but it's much safer than going for this trick because this trick is very precise and I don't think anyone's ever even gotten in or run. So another thing you want to be aware of is your input when you get the launch. As soon as you press up on the d-pad to get this height, you'll, you can see how Sly is facing here. This is like one frame before you get proxied, as you can see. And I'm still holding up on the, uh, the d-pad. At this point, I should probably be holding right already, but as you can see, it's too slow on the right input. If you wait too long to move right, you just hit this invisible barrier right here and you won't be able to make it over. So what you want to make sure you do is as soon as you get the launch, you need to start holding right on the D-pad and hold it the entire time. It's very precise. All of this is pretty precise, but with a little bit of timing and some practice, you can get it down. I know Zen was doing this in runs. He was getting it pretty consistently. Um, and it's also fairly early in the run, so it shouldn't be too big of a reset point. Um, I usually get this one out of every like four to five tries. So uh, it's definitely going to be a reset point. But if you want to go for Kedis, this is probably your best bet. So here is my last example of a an attempt that worked. As you can see, same setup. And this is going to be the perfect up timing and perfect right input. As you can see, I went immediately to the right. And I just clear that invisible wall and land right on the key. So a couple things to note here. One, like I said, this is the same setup as your normal Cletus launch. Same setup, so your starting position is right here on these cracks. You want to make sure your camera is on the right side of your screen. It's lined up like this. If it is, you're going to jump directly towards this bush with up on the D-pad. Um, if your camera's off, you're probably going to be more to the right or more to the left. You want to be right in front of this bush when you jump. When you are, use upright on the D-pad, run into the spot, and you need to time your up input with the moment he turns to face you. So he's going to do three little head shakes, the dog is, and then he's going to freeze for a second and turn. I don't know if you can see this in the video, but it happens very quick. He does three head shakes and then turns, and the moment he turns is when you want to hold up on the D-pad. And what I like to do is I like to roll my thumb from upright, like I'm using my thumb to press upright, and then I'm letting go of right and keeping my thumb on up, so I'm kind of just rolling my thumb off of it to, uh, to time this. And then again, I'm going to roll it off of up to right to make sure I can get the, uh, the launch to the key. And obviously that's the Cletus launch, but let me go to the regular Cletus launcher right here. So hold upright and then immediately go to up the moment you get proxied and then immediately go back to the right so you can get the uh, the angle 